All right, good morning, church. Good morning, family. Good morning, friends. And aloha to all of you. It's so good to be able to connect uh, on here, connect this way. Um, uh, I know that I've connected with a lot more people during this um, stay-at-home order than uh, I would have normally. And so you can see that God is making good out of all things, yeah? Um, I just wanted to give you guys a quick update uh, before I share an encouraging word today. And um, you know that Pukanaz, our church, is um, um, active in compassion and ministry. And we're still uh, giving food to families in our church, in our community, and on our island in need. And as of last Sunday, we, we were near 20,000 meals that we have uh, uh, purchased the food for and delivered to families here on, on Maui. And there's so many people that um, still haven't got their unemployment um, benefits, which is really crazy, but um, they're still waiting. And so they don't have the resources to buy food. And so because of you, because of all of you out there, you all of the people that are watching today and people in Pucanaz, because of your faithfulness and your generosity, we've been able to provide those meals. And I would just encourage you to continue to uh, to support us through tithes and offering, uh, however you can, however much you can. Um, $1, $5, we had one person give $2,000 which was, it's just a huge blessing. You know, God just continues to bless us. And 100% of those proceeds um, are being used to provide food for those families, 100%. And I think we're in week eight. So, and it's only been possible because of all of you. So thank you, mahalo. Um, we're malaming all of our people that God is bringing to us. And um, it's a blessing. And we couldn't do it without all of you guys. If you'd like to, to give, and some of you are already giving, um, you can you could give through mail, regular mail, or you could go to our um, website and give, which a lot of you have done, um, with um, through our PayPal account, and that's Pukulani Community Church of the Nazarene, Pukulani Community Church of the Nazarene dot org. Uh, that's how you can find that, and. Um, I just, I, I'm blown away by your generosity and faithfulness. Uh, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. But anyway, how's everybody doing? Um, are y'all surviving? Y'all doing okay? Everybody hanging in there? Um, it seems as if, it seems as if progress is being made with this pandemic that we're in. Yeah. Uh, many states are reopening or um, they're either reopening all the way or they're easing into uh, a reopening um, people are getting back to work and people need to work to provide for their families. So thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Um, I encourage you, all of you to continue to pray for God to heal our land and take care of our people. Uh, not just in the United States, but around the entire world. This is a world pandemic. And I encourage you church to remain confident or optimistic in our future. We have every reason to be optimistic, yeah? We will get through this. We really will. I, I truly believe that. Uh, matter of fact, uh, I'm confident of that because I know my God, yeah? I know my God. I know my Savior, Jesus Christ, and I have the Holy Spirit living in me just like you do. Um, I have hope, and I trust this is true for you as well. Don't, don't allow the current situation and circumstances to overwhelm you. Cling to that hope that we have in Jesus Christ. My hope is rooted in God's faithfulness. Yeah, God is ever faithful in his enduring and seeking love for us. Yeah, for all of creation. God loves all of his creation. His love endures forever. Amen. And what does that mean to endure? Do you ever think about that? What does it mean to endure? Well, Webster um, says, to endure means to continue in the same state, to remain firm without yielding through hardship or suffering, to, re to remain undiminished through time or trial. It never ceases. God's love never weakens. 
It never diminishes. And most importantly, it never fails, church. And that's something that we can hold on to, amen, as believers. It is seeking. It is forgiving. It is saving. And it is sustaining. His love gives us life. It never fails. Remember that, church. His love never fails. What a wonderful promise. It's in God's word, and we're going to look at that in just a little bit. God loves me, and God loves you, each one of you. Uh, because we know that to be true, we can trust him. Even in the darkest of times, yeah, we can trust God. Because of him, we have a future because of his great love. Today, I want to look at uh, Psalms 136. And many of you probably know this passage. You probably know this Psalms. So let's look at that really quick. Psalms 136, if you have your Bible. And if you don't, you can just uh, listen and follow along. Now this is, this is a psalm, a song or a poem of God's love, his great and enduring love. And so as I read through this, um, I'll, I'll read the first verse really quick. It says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. And you guys know that song. Um, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Um, it's a wonderful um, scriptural song. Now for the rest of the verses, because it repeats that, on, after every verse, his faithful love endures forever. I'm not going to say that every time until the very end, but I'm going to say it the very first time. So let's read this together. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. Give thanks to him who alone does mighty miracles. Give thanks to him who made the heavens so skillfully. Give thanks to him who placed the earth among the waters. Give thanks to him who made the heavenly lights, the sun to rule the day, and the moon and stars to rule the night. Give thanks to him who killed the firstborn of Egypt. He brought Israel out of Egypt he acted with a strong strong hand and a powerful arm. Give thanks to him who parted the Red Sea. He led Israel safely through. But he hurled Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea. Give thanks to him who led his people through the wilderness. I'm going to pause right there for just a minute. Sometimes, and I've had people tell me right now, Pastor, it feels like we're in the wilderness. It feels like this pandemic has us in the wilderness. Now, I realize everything we go through that's difficult is the worst, there, that the worst difficulty there's ever been from our perspective. But there's been a lot more difficult times than right now. But even so, it does kind of feel like we're in the wilderness that we're wandering in the wilderness, um, that we need to get out of this wilderness. We need to move on into something new. Well, give thanks to him, verse 16, who led his people through the wilderness. Just as he did for the Israelites so long ago, God will do for us today. That's a promise, yeah? Verse 17, give thanks to him, who struck down mighty kings. He killed powerful kings. Um, Sihon, king of the Amorites, and Og, king of Bashan. God gave the land of these kings as an inheritance, a special possession to his servant Israel. He remembered us in our weakness. He saved us from our enemies. He gives food to every living thing. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His faithful love endures forever. A promise of God. Praise the Lord. God is a God of enduring. Enduring. I, I can't say that very clearly. God is a God of enduring and unconditional love. 
yeah, a seeking, life-giving, and healing love, a love that makes all the difference, a love that produces joy in us, yeah, it should be, it should produce joy in us, no matter our circumstances, and builds in us a hope that cannot be shaken. I know some of you right now are struggling. You're shaking a little bit. Maybe there's a little fear. Cling to God. Abide in that love, that enduring love, that unconditional love. It's an everlasting love. Let's look really quick at 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7 and verse 13. And you guys know this passage too. This is the love passage, the love chapter, yeah? And, and Paul, when he wrote this, was talking about the spiritual gift. The greatest spiritual gift there is, is the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is God's love that lives in us, yeah? It's greater than any other spiritual gift to have that divine love in us, being produced in us, that we can share it with other people. That we can say, hey, we're different because we have this enduring love in us and this hope and this joy because of that love and God's faithfulness. And so um, he wrote that to the Corinthians. And let's look at this. But when I read this, I'm going to start with verse 4. I'm going to replace love with God. And I want to hear, I want you to hear what it sounds like. Verse 4, God is patient and God is kind. God is not jealous. God is not boastful. God is not proud. Nor is God rude. God does not demand his own way. God is a gentleman, yeah? He doesn't demand his own way. He wants us to allow him to work in us. God is not irritable. And this is important, church, because a lot of people feel like they're not worthy. But it's where none of us are worthy. It says, and God keeps no record of wrong, being wrong. God doesn't keep, hold that against us. Once he's forgiven us, it's gone. God does not rejoice about injustice, but God rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Yeah, God never gives up. These are promises. God never gives up. God never loses faith. God is always hopeful, and God endures through every circumstance. Yeah, his love endures forever. And now verse 13. Three things will last forever. So we're clouded with all of these things that, that we hold on to, that we seek. But Paul is saying there's three things to worry about as a, as a believer of Jesus Christ. Three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. God's transcending love, his unconditional, unwavering love that seeks us out wherever we're at, seeks us out and invites us to abide within him, within that love, um, where we can have peace, um, peace that can only come from a divine being, from a divine God who loves us. Um, we have a future and we have joy and hope because of him because of God's enduring love. Cling to God, church. Cling to God. Hold firm to your faith in Him. Yeah? Be optimistic in your future. Don't, I, I just, I have so many people getting hold of me and they say, Pastor, I just don't see any hope. It's never going to go back to normal. Everything's going to be terrible. Everything is going to be wonderful. Because of God in us, because of, because of his love for us, because our future isn't in this world. Our future is in Christ Jesus, amen? We need to remember that. When we allow these external things to influence our thinking and cause us to be negative or be um, doubtful and fearful. God wants us to have hope and joy and cling to him and, and to have that love that flows into us, uh, change us and flow out of us to other people. No matter the circumstances that we're in. Now, I want you to think about the early church. The things that they were going through. The persecution. People were being put to death because of their faith in Jesus. 
and yet they were able to hold hold strong to their faith, to cling to that love, to, to, to hold on to their salvation and trust God, no matter the circumstances. God wants us to be the same, church. He wants us to say, praise the Lord. Well, when bad news comes in, praise the Lord, because I know God has a plan. And he's going to take this, the bad news, um, the bad circumstances, and turn them around um, for good, for his own perfect uh, plan and glory. Amen. So cling to God and be optimistic because his love endures forever. For you and for me, his love endures forever. Now, some of you might be discouraged today. Um, maybe you, you say, Pastor, I can't experience God's love. I, I'm so overwhelmed right now. I can't experience it. Or maybe others of you feel that you're not worthy. I talked about that a little bit ago. Uh, maybe the enemy is telling you that, Yeah. Maybe he's been telling you that for years, that you're not worthy of God's love. I'm not lovable. Yeah, I've had that those thoughts myself at times. Maybe you've bought into that lie. Um, well, friends, none of us are worthy. Not a single one of us are worthy. We've all done things. We all have a past. We've all sinned. Yeah, but because God's love endures forever, because it's for us, for each of us, for the whosoever's, who believe in him we have a future God loves us no matter what we've done no matter where we're at in our lives he loves us right now today he wants us to not be overwhelmed with uh, fear but to, to to look to him to cling to him and to trust him his love pursues us with a divine purpose he desires for us to receive his love to accept his gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. That's his desire, is that we accept him. He desires relationship with you and with me. Real, personal relationship, yeah? He loves you. He loves us. He doesn't condemn us, and he doesn't hold our past against us, yeah? He forgives and forgets, and his love will be transformative if we choose to accept it, yeah? He can take the fear away. His peace will come in if we ask if we ask the Holy Spirit to give us that peace. So, friends, if you're struggling, seek Him more. Yeah, seek God more. The more you seek Him, the more you'll find Him. Ask Him to help you have have faith, to calm your nerves, to give you hope, to fill you with joy. To give you a positive attitude, an optimistic outlook on life. He will, because he is ever faithful. He loves you, church. Remember, remember this. If you don't remember anything else today, remember this. His love endures forever. He is a faithful God, and he loves you. And he proved that love by giving Jesus to die on the cross, that we might have life, <clears throat> that we might experience that love. So I want to encourage you, um, look up, cling to, to God, cling to Christ, experience the joy of salvation. We'll get through this. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you, Lord. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you that your love endures forever. We thank you that you're a God who pursues us with every bit of your being, that your desire is for us to accept you, not through coercion, but just through a reciprocal love. Lord, help us to have enough faith to reach out to you, to hold on to you, to cling to you. Lord, I know there's some listening today that have dark thoughts that are fearful, that maybe feel like they can't go on another moment. The news is so overwhelming. Be with them, Lord. I pray that your spirit just surround them, that they they can sense your presence, Lord, and that they can uh, know that there's something greater than the negative news that they, they're hearing. Lord, help them to experience your love. Lord, I just pray for everybody that's uh, listening today, and I ask that you bless them. I pray a covering over them, Lord. I just ask that your Holy Spirit surround them, that he fill the, filled each one of them, Lord, with your love. Let them feel you as you manifest your, yourself in them. 
Lord, we're so grateful. We look forward with hope. Help us to be the church that, uh, help us to allow that love that we receive to flow out of us in this difficult time. The harvest is ripe. Lord, help us to be part of um, the harvest. Help us, Lord, to be more like you. I, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory in your, heaven, in your heavenly name. Amen. Aloha, church. Thank you for joining, and we'll see you again tomorrow. God bless.